A very long time ago, after Prophet Adam, peace be upon him, passed away, a lot of people started to forget about Allah and began to pray to statues. This is a very bad thing to do. It is the opposite of what Prophet Adam had taught us. The people used to go to these statues with their children and ask them to bless and protect them. Of course, that would never happen because only Allah has the power to protect people. So one day, Allah chose one of the few good people left as his messenger. His name was Noah. Noah was a gentle and loving man. He believed in Allah and worshipped only him. Noah began to tell his people to stop praying to statues and start worshipping only Allah. He told them that their statues have no power to do anything for them, only Allah does. Their statues were made from wood and stone, and the people themselves had made them with their own hands. So how can these statues have the power to do anything? Every time Noah spoke to them, the disbelievers would put their fingers in their ears so they could not hear him, and they would cover their faces so they would not see him. The poor and the weak accepted Noah's message, but the rich and mighty kept on laughing at Noah and the believers. Through all of this, Noah did not lose hope. He remained patient and kept on calling them to follow the right way. He reminded the disbelievers not to forget about the wonderful world they see around them, who created the dazzling sun that they see shining in the sky, which gives them brightness in the day and helps the plants and animals to grow. And the moon and the stars that they see shimmering at night it gives them a way to know where they are going in the dark and helps to show us the beginning and the end of each month. The disbelievers did not listen to him and carried on praying to their statues. Even Noah's wife and one of his sons did not accept his message. 950 years passed and finally Prophet Noah asked Allah for help. Allah answered Noah's call and revealed to him that he had done a good job. Allah told Noah that he would punish the disbelievers in a great way for not believing in him. Allah ordered Noah to build a ship and told him that when he saw his oven at home pour out with water, then he should get onto the ship. Noah trusted Allah and began collecting the materials he needed. With the directions given to him by Allah and the help of the few believers who had accepted his message, Noah got to work and began building the ship. It took much hard work. They cut trees, made sheets of wood, joined them together and fixed them with metal pins. Day by day, Noah and the believers worked hard on the ship. When the disbelievers saw Noah building a ship and so far from the water, they would laugh at him and say, Since when are you a carpenter, O Noah? Where will this ship sail? On the sand or on the mountains? But Noah and his people did not listen to them because they trusted Allah. At last, the ship was ready. It was made up of three levels. It was very, very big. Allah ordered Noah to find a male and female of every animal and insect 
and he also had to find enough food to last all the animals and the believers for a long time. One day, Noah saw a lot of water gushing out of his oven and knew right away that this was the sign from Allah. He hurried to find all the believers and a pair of every animal and insect. Noah helped the believers onto the ship, then pair by pair he guided the animals and insects as well. Some had long legs, some had wings, some crawled and some hopped their way onto the ship. The animals came running, monkeys and lions, snakes and turtles, rabbits and bears, giraffes and rhinos, cats and kangaroos, cows and sheep all went onto the ship. There were chickens and ducks, ostriches and flamingos, just to name a few. Birds of all sizes, big and small, flew onto the ship. As soon as everyone was safely on the ship, black clouds started to form and covered the entire sky. The wind started to howl angrily. The thunder rolled and the lightning flashed. Then the rain began to pour down heavily. The disbelievers were very scared and they finally understood why Noah had built the ship. They started climbing up mountains so that they would not drown but soon enough even the mountains were covered and all the disbelievers drowned. More and more rain fell each day until the entire earth was covered with water so much that Noah and the believers could not even see the mountains and trees anymore. The earth was like a huge ocean. Noah's ship sailed over the enormous waves and under the heavy rain for many days. Until one day, Allah ordered the sky to stop raining and the earth cracked open and swallowed up all the water. The clouds opened and the beautiful blue sky and bright sun could be seen again. Noah's ship rested calmly on a mountain peak called Mount Juddi. Prophet Noah and the believers thanked Allah for saving them from such a devastating flood and everyone left the ship happily. Then the animals were led to safety. Prophet Noah and the believers gladly started a fresh new life together. Their amazing journey on Noah's ship lives on to this day and you can find it in the Holy Quran. Look for yourself. Learning is fun, learning with Saki, learning is cool, at Omar at school. We learn about Allah, and what Muhammad said, every single day we're learning something new. We're learning with Kazra, about healthy foods to eat, Tima loves to teach us new things every week. Learning is fun, learning with Saki. Learning is cool at Omar and school. We learn about Allah and what Muhammad said. Every single day we're learning something.